An asteroid mining spacecraft is designed to extract resources from minor asteroids and rocky objects orbiting the Sun. These spacecraft would travel to asteroids, land on their surface, and extract valuable resources such as metals, water, and other materials that could be used for space exploration, colonization, or commercial purposes. Asteroid mining is the extraction of valuable resources from asteroids that pass close to Earth, such as water, metals, and minerals. These resources might be put to use for a variety of objectives, such as space exploration, manufacturing, and fuel generation. According to SpaceX, asteroid mining might be a critical step towards allowing long-term human presence and exploration in space. The corporation has also discussed the possible benefits of employing asteroid-derived materials to serve space-based industries while simultaneously lowering the cost and environmental effects of mining on Earth. Developing an asteroid mining spacecraft and successfully carrying out mining operations would need considerable technological advances and government permits. While there is presently no timetable for SpaceX's engagement in asteroid mining, it remains a potential future development for the firm. Various companies and organizations have proposed or developed several types of asteroid mining spacecraft concepts. Some spacecraft would be designed to extract resources from the surface of asteroids, while others would drill into the asteroids to remove materials from their interiors. Some designs involve robots to mine asteroids, while others require human operators. The development of asteroid mining spacecraft is still in its early stages, and many technological challenges need to be addressed before asteroid mining becomes feasible and economically viable. For example, asteroid mining spacecrafts must be able to navigate to the asteroids, land safely on their surfaces, and extract and transport resources back to Earth or other destinations. However, many experts believe that asteroid mining could become an essential space exploration and resource utilization industry. Asteroids are thought to contain large quantities of valuable resources that could be used to support future space missions. Coincidentally, the primary purpose of the second IM2 rideshare payload to be announced is to search for resources in space. It isn't concerned with asteroids, but NASA's 200 kilogram or 440 pound Lunar Trailblazer spacecraft is designed to find, characterize, and map water ice resources on the Moon. That map could help future missions explore the possibility of turning lunar ice caps into commodities like breathable oxygen or rocket fuel. The challenges facing such concepts are extreme, but a rocket propellant depot located on the lunar surface could significantly increase the performance of future moon landers. Propellant depots in lunar orbit could also help boost spacecraft further and faster to destinations elsewhere in the solar system. The first IM2 rideshare payload to be announced was Orbit Fab's Tanker 002 spacecraft. It's unclear if Orbit Fab is on track to fly Tanker 002 in late 2023, but the spacecraft is meant to be the first geostationary propellant depot ever launched. The Colorado startup has already won the U.S. military's $13.3 million contract to refuel satellites in geostationary orbit. 36,000 kilometers or 22,250 miles above Earth's surface. Tanker 2 may be meant to support that refueling mission. The spacecraft is designed to carry a few hundred pounds of hydrazine monopropellant, potentially enabling it to extend the useful lives of multiple multi-million dollar satellites by several years. Alongside IM-2, Falcon 9 will launch Tanker 2 on a lunar flyby trajectory. But thanks to the cooperation of startup GeoJump, instead of entering orbit around the moon, Tanker 2 will slingshot around the moon to slow itself down. The lunar slingshot will allow the depot to efficiently enter geostationary orbit where it can begin refueling spacecraft. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket costs $784 per kilogram to LEO. That is approaching two orders of magnitude less per kilogram than the space shuttle. SpaceX is currently developing the Big Falcon rocket, the BFR, which is said to be capable of carrying a payload of 150 tons to LEO at a cost of $7 million, which equates to $50 per kilogram. Blue Origin's new Shepard cost per kilogram is currently unknown. 
Blue Origin's new Glen, currently in development, will be capable of taking over 45 tons to low Earth orbit, and the company, this year, signed a contract for 10 launches with Telstat. Blue Origin has not yet released the cost of the spacecraft, however, it's clear that they are not far behind SpaceX. SpaceX is currently winning the space race against Blue Origin and other companies such as Lockheed Martin. With this competition comes greater innovation from all the companies which helps drive down the cost per kilogram of launching equipment into space. Asteroid mining spacecraft will eventually become extremely large and currently the BFR is the best option with a cost of $50 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. The BFR's ability to refuel in orbit allows an asteroid mining spacecraft to be as heavy as 100 tons because the BFR would use all its fuel to carry the payload to LEO and from there another BFR could be launched to refuel the first BFR rocket. The cheaper the cost to orbit, the better for asteroid mining for two reasons. First, because it is cheaper for the industry to get equipment into orbit. Secondly. With cheaper launch costs comes greater interest and therefore investment into space. This in turn will open the asteroid mining industry to sell the mined material to companies working and manufacturing in space. The future is very exciting. Both SpaceX and Blue Origin have come a long way and they are both striving to bring down launch costs, which is a huge benefit for the asteroid mining industry, both directly and indirectly. If BFR's development stay on track, it should be ready to take large asteroid mining spacecrafts into orbit in the not-too-distant future. Broker 2 is the second of the two Astroforge spacecraft scheduled to launch in 2023. The first, Broker 1, will head to low Earth orbit, LEO, as early as April 2023 on SpaceX's seventh Falcon 9 rideshare launch. Once in orbit, it will attempt to demonstrate technology Astroforge has developed to refine platinum ore in microgravity conditions. Broker 2 will then visit an asteroid and search for platinum resources. If enough platinum is discovered, Bloomberg reports that Astroforge will send a third mission to demonstrate the ability to land on the asteroid. As early as 2025, Astroforge's fourth mission would be the first to attempt to land, gather ore, turn that ore into platinum, and return the precious metal to Earth. Astroforge has raised $13 million to date. Unlike failed asteroid mining startups, deep space industries, and planetary resources, the new company intends to exploit increasingly capable off-the-shelf hardware and service to keep its costs as low as possible. In theory, that will allow it to focus most of its resources on developing the unproven technology required to gather and refine space-based resources. Finally, the IM-2 Nova C moon lander's primary payload is a pair of NASA's instruments designed to drill into the lunar surface and analyze the regolith for volatiles. Also known as Prime-1, the mission will be NASA's first serious exploration of in-situ resource utilization, or ISRU, on the Moon. The mission is a microcosm of the future of space utilization, which may focus heavily on ISRU and refueling to extend the capabilities of chemically powered rockets and spacecraft. Lunar Trailblazer will map lunar water resources. Broker 2 will attempt to prospect an asteroid for extractable metal. IM2 will test technologies that could help extract resources from the moon. And Tanker 2 will be a significant step forward for commercial propellant depots, which could eventually create markets for space resources. Astroforge will use SpaceX to get into space. Also, according to TechCrunch, the first mission to launch in April using a rideshare launch from SpaceX using the Transporter 7, the 6U CubeSat, supplied by the space technology firm Orb Astro, will have asteroid like material preloaded to show Astroforge's refinement and extraction power in zero gravity. The second mission will send the company into depths of space to gather information on an asteroid surface that the company plans to mine later this decade. We have to find some way to get the regolith off the asteroid and process it in our refinery, and we believe we've solved that for our target asteroid. 
CEO Matt Gialak said in an interview with TechCrunch. He stated that to help identify the most potential asteroids to exploit, the corporation collaborates with academic advisors, NASA, and the nonprofit Planetary Science Institute. Additionally, the business and the Colorado School of Mines recently published a paper assessing the metal content of asteroids that may be mined, marketed as commodities on Earth, or utilized in space. The second trip will involve studying the target asteroid surface using high-resolution photos, Gialak revealed. That publication stated, Textures of metal-rich asteroid surfaces remain to be examined. Besides the fact that the asteroid is closer to Earth than, for instance, a boulder in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, he declined to disclose anything more about it. The asteroid belts far away would take us like 14-year round trips, he said. It's something that is much better suited for research and exploration. That's not a viable business case for us, he added. With Houston-based Intuitive Machines, the company will instead travel to lunar orbit before continuing to deep space. Once more powered by Orbastro, Astroforge's spacecraft will embark on a shorter 11-month trek to the intended asteroid. The fourth mission, which would be the company's first refining mission to return platinum to Earth, and the third mission, which would land on the asteroid, are currently being planned by Astroforge. What do you think about asteroid mining spacecraft? Let us know in the comments. So that was all for today's video. Make sure you hit that bell icon for upcoming videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.